The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, Lee, Matt Davio with Lee Jones here for our seminar on how to trade wild markets and keeping a clear head in these wild markets. And, Lee, what we've been talking about with these wild markets is not necessarily in the, in the sense of volatility that they're wild, but they're very very difficult. They're, it's a slow tick trending market upwards, obviously. We've been in, in for a long time here. So thanks for coming on. Okay. Um, we, it is hard because it just continues to grind. And I, I know it needs to pull back. I, I, and you and I talk about this. You like to short a lot. And I do if I can. But I'm afraid to put any really long uh, swings in because I feel like it needs to pull back. And then when I try to short it, Boom, I'm right out of the trade. This thing wants to go higher. Yeah, you know, it's uh, we are at a time, Lee, where breakouts don't work, breakdowns don't work. So you're almost selling, you're selling top ticks and you're buying bottom ticks, which is contra to everything that you're taught as a trader. But that's how it's working right now. And, and as you said, one of the things that I think we want to talk about here today is just staying in the game. And I you know, quite consistently over the past four to five weeks, I've been not making money, not losing money, winning, losing, winning, losing, winning, losing, back and forth, trying to keep small, you know, losses to a minimum and really trade less in a, in a time like this. Well, and I've done very similarly to you. I'm going in with one, I focus on maybe four or five stocks. Now, I trade primarily options for day trading. Mm -hmm. I may go in with six on the radar and end up trading two all day long or all morning long and watch for the runner. Today we traded rims several times. I mean, that thing just ran. And we'd say surf stuff and go and try to scalp it again this afternoon. So yes. we don't sit at our screens all day. I don't like to sit at my screens all day. Do you? No, you and I have that in common. I, I, I really only like to trade a couple hours a day, and, and, and uh, I take my stabs, and, and if I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So... We absolutely have that in common. So let's give people a little bit of background, Lee, uh, you know, about your trading style. You do trade options uh, quite a bit exclusively. I've been in that game for a long time. I traded options and, and ran portfolios for 15 years. I pretty much uh, still do stick to trading options in, in futures primarily, but I'm probably you know, 80% on the uh, futures side, directional trader, and then 20%, again, kind of swing trading when it comes to options. So, you know, give us a little background on, on, on your style and, and, and kind of how you look at the market. And then we'll get into the topic. We'll give people a little bit longer to, to come into the, uh, the webinar here today. And then we'll get into the topic of, you know, dealing with these difficult times and dealing with, uh, you know, the in inevitable drawdowns, I, I would say, that come in, in trading any market. Well, again, I primarily day trade the options. Now, I'll do some complex options. Do you do spreads and things like that? Yeah, most of the stuff I do is uh, on options side is pretty complex, and I, I, I wouldn't even bother uh, sharing it with most of my members because uh, it would be... Yeah, okay. And, and I do those, too, when I, when I have some direction. If I'm not quite sure, then I have to go out further. But mm -hmm. as a day trader of options, I step in and watch the open, and then try to pray, play primarily bounce calls. So I, we, you know, I'm usually done in the first hour. Right. Uh, but again, it's options for leverage, bounce calls, puts are hard to day trade. Yeah. You know, the liquidity's not quite there. So that's what I do. So you and like when the market is like this. I mean, it, it's uh, it's tricky. It's yeah. tricky. So you like to look for gaps. I would imagine gap up stocks, uh, primarily gap ups, uh, not versus as you said, gap downs. So you're looking for stocks that are running. What? I like the gap downs. Gap downs my favorite, though, Matt, because I'll grab that on the bottom and write it back up, even okay. for a little bit. Okay. And, and and so you look for those again, big moves on the open, up or down, then to you know, kind of as your target of stocks to isolate. Right. And, and as you said, you came in with six today, and you only traded a couple of them. And and it changes. The, the beautiful okay. thing, the beautiful thing about uh, trading uh, individual options on stocks is that there is a new group of names pretty much every day, and that's definitely something that takes a lot of dedication and focus to find those new names. You know, you have to be aware of earnings. You have to be aware of market. It does. Yeah. It does. But I have about six that I trade every day of my life. I cool. make a living just off of those six. I mean, I tell people an Apple option a day keeps the bills paid. I trade Apple every day. Yeah. 
Every, and it, I don't care where it lands. I trade it every day. And you know, when you're trading a, a three hundred and fifty dollars stock, three sixty, wherever it may be today, that's absolutely. Yes. You know, again, as traders, this is this is also something that I always say to people: Lee, whether you're trading wheat, the ES corn, oil, what I'm looking for as a trader is the same as what you're looking for, which is I'm looking for the widest scope of range intraday. And, and quite frankly, folks, where you're going to find that in a lot of cases is, uh, you know, things that are in play. Obviously, Apple is a $360 stock, so, you know, a 2% move is 7 points, and that can happen, as Lee said, in and out all day. So. You know, one of the things I always suggest to people, and they always, you know, their eyes kind of go, what? You, you know, you're trading hundred plus dollar stocks. If you want to trade and, and trade options on, on, on things that are moving, you really have to look in kind of that hundred dollar and up level on a consistent basis. Would you agree with that? Correct. Correct. And I want to ask you something. I want to put, I want to turn the tables and ask you a few questions about the future side because you trade. You have a group of traders that trade futures with you, right? Right. Here in the day, and and do do they do you guys come in and and collaborate in the mornings or how do how do you set up for the day? You know, I've got a I've got a private Twitter feed that I sent out kind of my buy and sell orders, and and quite frankly, it's been pretty slow the last couple of weeks. I've been making you know calls that have been consistently wrong. I would say to you. And uh, therefore, I've really scaled back my size, and this is one of the things that I'd like to talk about. Again, during a tough market, I go through, I go through them just as much as a you know as a two decade long trader. I have difficulties in markets at times, just as a retail newbie would. And it may be the different, it may be yeah. a, it may be a different time than a new trader, but I do have struggles, and I quite frankly, I have not been winning consistently over the last five weeks. So one of the things that I like to do, one of the things that I like to do with our members is look at what is moving on the future side of things. That on the future side of things, the ES again. If you look at the range, the average true range of the ES over the last two weeks, outside of some overnight moves, you've really been locked in a seven to ten point range, which is less than a you know really a, a half to a three quarter percent move. So we have switched our focus, Lee, over to the grains. You know, wheat is moving three to five percent every day. Uh, corn wow. is moving. Uh, oil is moving still one to two percent. Obviously, Egypt affects that. So, right. you, you know, just as you're shifting your focus every day when you're looking at ranges, and I think this is one of the key things when you're trading, is you have to be flexible. Whether you're trading options with Lee Jones. To find those wider ranges, uh, those are going to be the ways that you find the opportunities. And you can't get hung up in what worked yesterday may not work today. Well, and you just, actually, you just said something that I want to challenge thinking of people that are listening you know, to us talk back and forth today. You know, the market's not the same as we started out, Matt, years ago. Um, it, done by computers and robots, so I use a lot of math and algorithms. Have you, uh, do you use some of that in your trading? I do. I've always been a technical trader, so for me, <clears throat> it's always the picture, as we can see in the background here, we're actually looking at, uh, you know, just a, a bunch of Euro charts here on the background, uh, be uh, below our, our phone call here, Lee. Um, absolutely, I, I use pretty simple technicals. Price is the ultimate arbitrage for me. Uh, volume is important, and right. uh, and then after that, you know, I use some basic te technicals, moving averages, RSI, uh, and then I use. Uh, I'm a big Fibonacci trader when it comes to you know finding. Once I have a range, and if Apple's a seven point range, say in that first half hour, I know where I want to buy up to, and I know where or buy down to, and I know where I want to sell down to. So those are the things that uh, you know I want to look at pretty consistently, and usually opening range is important. Right. Is that something that you use regularly? Well, we've had a great first of the year. Mm -hmm. the, the December, that last couple of weeks of December, I, I don't know why I even bother to try to trade it. It's just, you know, the holidays, et cetera. But, up, you know, the first of the year up through now, you know, we've consistent, I've been consistent in making my goals each day. But I have to work. Yeah. I really had to work at it. So I can imagine a new trader trying to sit down and figure out what in the world can I do with the markets like this. You know, anything can come across the news 
and swing these things all over the place. Yeah, um, you, we watched you, that last week with AIG news. Yeah. Boom, the thing tanks. You know, you've got to be ready. Yeah, and and that's an important you know uh, note for people to understand is. You know, again, if you're if you've if you've come from maybe the buy and hold world of stocks and or mutual funds, you could look at a market like this. You could look at a market like this and say it's easy right now. And and quite frankly, that's the truth. If you come from that world, uh, we've been nothing but up since that March '09 low at six 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 on the spoos, and we're you know we basically doubled now in in a two year time frame, less than a two year time frame. So that has been absolutely the truth. I mean, we really haven't, what have we had, maybe uh, one, maybe one and a half, five percent pullbacks in that entire two-year time frame. So Correct. it's been, uh, you know, I, I think that lulls people to sleep and that perception, as you said, Lee, of risk really becomes mitigated and people start, you know, they don't worry about what happens when AIG goes down a big chunk because of news in the day. So talk about that a little bit. You know, how do you, you know, how do you prepare for, the black swans that come inevitably, especially with, you know, I think stocks are even more difficult because you have individual name risk, you have sector risk, and then you have overall market right. all wrapped into one. Well, you do, and you also have them at some highs over the last, as you mentioned, the last year and a half, two years. So I have to look at, you know, how much more potential do I have for these stocks to keep going up? Mm -hmm. um, but as a day trader, again, I just... I, you know, the last three years, the way this market's been, I just tr I trade on shorter time fractals. I get in there and I get out. I may do one or two night holds, and that's about it right now. I just I ha I, I, we were talking earlier. You know, I haven't put out a lot of swings yet because I feel like the thing needs to come back. <laughs> so as a new trader coming in, I think I would probably look at things that are that are uh, maybe off coming bouncing off some lows or bouncing off some support. And uh, honestly, I got to look at some of the fundamentals kicking in yeah. um, because I don't want to trade sick companies right now. If there's some some type of negative news looming out there, I don't want to be sitting in that trade when it hits the press. Yeah, uh, it's just too it's just too crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you when do you start trading your futures on Sunday night or Monday? You know, I, I pretty much as, as a so again. Here's how I break out. I, I am a swing trader, which I have really little to, like you, very little going on on the swing trading side of my equation. And that could be anywhere from a day to, say, a month uh, on those types of trades. But oh, yeah. there's not a pullback to buy, and there's and I'm afraid to sell, like everybody else, on a swing basis. Um, and then I, I also look at day trades, and it depends on what vehicles I'm trading. You know, every the grains have a shorter time frame. They really trade 7.30 to, to 11.15. Oil is basically, you know, kind of 5.30. I'm on the West Coast, so I'm giving you my times. 5.30 to, you know, it's really 11.30, and then that market's over. And it's really 6.30 to 11.30, so it's really only five hours. So as a day trader, I look at when the most volume transacts. Uh, on the ES, that, again, is 6.30 until 1. And then I have rules depending on which vehicle it is I'm trading. I typically... On the financials, the ES, TF, NQ, YM, they're all the same. Pick one and trade one. This is what I'll also I tell people. Right. They all are moving in concert, but they really all move you know, up or down together. So you don't really need to trade more than one of those. Pick one. I don't care if it's the YM, but trade it. You know, uh, I like the S&P. It's the most liquid. It's the most, uh, uh, yeah. you know, it's got the most volume. That being said, I don't like to trade the first half hour, Lee. Uh, on a day trade, and I don't like to initiate a day trade in the last half hour. And then I don't like to initiate a trade between 9 and 11. So you were saying you don't like to sit in front of the screens. Well, I just gave you three hours. Yep. That I really don't need to sit in front of the screens either. So it's very similar. Um, so that's really what I look at. And, uh, you know, again, we the grains open at 7.30, so they're an hour after the financial, so I can kind of shift after that opening half hour to see if anything is there, put my trade orders in, move to the grains. I'm always following oil and gold. They're, they're key factors. Uh, you know, again, it doesn't matter what you trade. You, Lee, are looking at these same things, even though you're trading in individual stocks. You want to know what the... Right. You know, you want to know what the tick is. You want to know what the AD is. You want to you want to know what all the oscillators are doing, just to give you kind of a, a good overall feel for the markets. I would I would imagine. One thing I want to I want to just really convey. I'm you know 
I don't know really who are who's on our audience here today, but you know we're both seasoned traders, and we're both saying this is difficult market conditions. So maybe they might need to look at this and think it's okay that cash is a position some days. I don't know why people think they have to sit down every single day and try to make a trade, especially as newer newer traders. I don't know many people that can pull out 20 solid days a month of positive trades. No. And um, I think people sit down and they want to trade because they're available to trade the market that day. Right. Like this care. Correct. It, it's a it's a good point. And 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 again, I will look at if I don't see a certain range every morning in the ES, I won't even trade it. I'll just take it off my screens. Will you break your rule and change the times or something like that if the market's conditioned? Are dangerous, or do you automatically just? I mean, you've done it long enough, and you just stay right with those that, that criteria. What do you do to modify? Well, I would say that if there is something going on in the world between nine and eleven, you'll know it, and the volatility will show it, and I'll stick around for sure. But that's right. more that's more the anomaly than it is the norm. But absolutely, I mean, if if the opportunity is there at nine o'clock, I'm not going to walk away. But I can tell you, we you know outside of you know, the Egyptian day, we haven't had any of those days in the last three or four months. So it's it's also, yeah. you know, we're also basically the volume is getting smaller every day. I think you're, you're, you're seeing less players come in. And, and, and as you said, I think pros, yeah. Lee, are, are, are staying away from this market. You can say what you want, but, the yeah. you know, the, the brokers that I talk to, their volumes are down. Uh, you know, I know they want. You know, I know uh, the Fed wants to get retail back into this market by getting higher prices. That's that scares me. And, and and again, I am trading number of transactions much lower, and the size is much lower during a time like this than probably yeah. four or five years. And so, me too. Smaller time, smaller times, and smaller positions. Yes. Yes. Which. You know, when I tell people that, you know, they're always astounded. But and, and it, what's interesting, Lee, is, you know, the fall of 08 through the summer of 09, when volatility was extreme, I was trading bigger and more often. And both sides, long and short, didn't matter. It was a yeah. good trading environment. So I will scale up when the volatility goes up, which is, again, it's, people think, wow, right. you know, that's like almost counter to what they are taught. But that is how I behave. You know, when there's opportunity, I'm in the market. And, and, and I think that's the way, as you said, Lee, you've got to pull away from the market at times. Well, I make a few more trades. They may be smaller, but I, I may jump in and try to grab. You, you, I was talking to you today when I was trying to scalp Apple, you know, and, or, or whatever, and I was saying, oh, let me grab this Apple very quickly. You know, I'm right. going in for 20 to 30 cents on the trade, or maybe even uh, 17 cents, which doesn't sound a lot, but if you're going in with a, a 20 or 30 contract lot, that's not so bad. Right. Um, I do have to say, though, when, when, I, when I sit down on some of these days and the market has gapped below, if I can watch when the buyers step in, the liquidity's not where it was, and we, we've established that, I can still pull the bounce place. But I'm also a technical trader, and I do a lot of algorithms. I've, I've done my math. I do math that pretty much mirrors, I'm pretty close with what the uh, institutions do. So I follow that. But I can tell you in the last four or five days, uh, if I mention standard deviation, um, you know, I do a lot of standard deviations on my charts. And these things are up at the top yeah. of these standard deviations of where the, the institutional buys are. And I don't know how much longer it's going to sit there before they're ready to to sell off a little bit. Well, you know, two things can happen. I agree with you, but uh, you know, I, I think all of us, you know, pros are sitting there thinking, oh, I'm, I'm afraid to buy, but maybe, you know, maybe maybe we'll see that. You know, what I'd love to see, Lee, and I'm sure you're like this, is let's see a blow off. Let's see a, a move higher and really, really just squash everybody. Because what we're doing, you know, you grinding. Show me, show yeah. me the money. Yeah. Show me the money. I mean, let's get it. Let's get it on. I don't have any problem with this thing going higher, but let's get, let's go higher significantly, not one tick at a time. I mean, it's you know. I'll be honest with you. I don't care if it goes down. Just give me a direction. Just give me some movement. So that that leads me to my next question. How do you uh, think and handle right now the last four days? Very non-directional markets. You know, how do you deal in situations like that where, as you said, and you try to teach your students, sit on your hands, stay away. There is no edge here. So how do you deal? How do you trade the first hour? 
Okay. The, the first hour. I have two sessions, that first half hour and then that next hour. So it's really an hour and a half. After that, there's no reason to sit there because most people will give back their profits. Mm -hmm. So I get what I can, take more, maybe more trades than I, you know, I may be looking at six tickers, but I may trade two. Yeah. And instead of making three trades, I may make six because I'm, get, I'm getting smaller bits off of it. But that's all I can do. One of the first things I teach people is scalping. Scalping yeah. is the hardest thing for us as pros to do. And that's the first thing I want them to learn because when the market's like this, you've got to be able to scalp. Yep, that's true. I, 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 would, I would not disagree. Scalping skill. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what are some of those skills that you try to uh, enable, you know, and teach people? Because it's not an easy task, and it's not something that's going to happen overnight either. And, and you know it, I know it. it, it we always tell people, you know, you're, you're going to spend a year. It's not. But, but now you deal, I think you deal with more experienced traders than I do, right? I mean, I hit the beginner. Are you your futures traders pretty well know something about trading, right, to be able to step into that arena. Well, you know, I, I, I think you get a little bit of both. I mean, unless they're, unless they're learning from you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, and, and that's what I do. They, most of, a lot of the beginners don't know anything really. So if I'm teaching them to scalp that 7 to 10 cents and they learn that and practice that, they don't know any different. Right. So when we catch these runners and they're able to catch these dollar moves and 50 cent moves, which is a lot to us when we go in with these contracts, you know, they're in heaven, but by default, they learn how to scout. I teach that hardest skill first so that when they're ready, you know, we can, we can go for the runners. I mean, there's, a, there's usually one or two that will move each day. We just have to find it. We just you know, don't know when, when it's to, going to show up either. Are you trying to play, uh, you know, options that have uh, good um, open interest lead? Good open interest, and it has to have enough volume for us to go in with a significant lot. You know, if you're trading three to five contracts, I don't care if it only trades 50 in the day. But oh, you know, yeah. if I go in with – now, my students know – 10 lot or 10 contracts is large enough, but you know I may go in with a 400 lot, mm -hmm. and I've got to make sure the liquidity is there. So I, that's another reason I trade the Apples and the Amazons. Sure. Uh, it's Absolutely. got enough out there. Netflix has been one of our most fun. That is my another bread and butter. It just moves so much during the day. I can just run that thing all over the place. Yeah, I think Netflix, so, Amazon, Baidu, uh, you know, Priceline, all Baidu's these. Good. Yeah. We all, trade X, U.S. Steel. Yep. And again, we're talking we're about high, high price stocks, IBM even. I mean, these are all fat, you know, uh, expensive stocks that option strategies are perfect uh, for people, Lee, because they can't come in and control, you know, most small people, newbies, can't control 10, you know, or 1,000 mm -hmm. a a shares of a, of a stock outright. They just don't have the capacity. Right. So, you know, I, I think if you know, you've got a teacher like yourself, this is important. One of the things, you know, kind of, you know, as we circle around here in our subject matter today, how to handle, you know, periods of drawdowns and losses. As I, as I said before we came on, this has been a difficult five-week stretch for me, but I also know that at the back end of it, things will pick up and, you know, everything has its end, whether it's good or bad. And I try not to get too elevated when things are great, and I try not, you know, I try to be humble when things are great, and I try to be even more humble when the market is just, uh, you know, not giving me, not giving me the juice that it uh, likes to at times. So how do you? Well, the market's always right. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? that the saying? The market's always right. You better play by the rules. <laughs> so how do you handle that when you go through periods like that, Lee, where you're just, you know, things aren't, the market's not firing the way you want it, and you're not, you know, juicing it again the way that you want it. How do you deal with situations? Do you take time off? Do you walk away from the screens even further? No, nope. I make the trade come to me. I make the trade come to me. I, I honestly haven't had a bad day in probably five or six years. I don't care what the market's doing. I make the trade come to me. Now, I may not do as many, and I may not make the goal that I wanted, but I'll take what it gives me that day. And I'm like you. I'm humble. I, I, if it only gives me $100 today and gives me 5000 tomorrow, I'm okay with that as right. long as I'm on the right side of it. Yeah. And again, just, just positioning myself so that I'm not out there sitting. I feel like a sitting duck if I'm out there with swings, yeah. and I don't, I don't know which way this thing wants to go. Right. Yeah, so Itching up is not impressive to me. So why be in the trade, exactly. So uh, 
Yeah. I think similarly in that I don't come in with a uh, dollar in mind that I want to make every day. It doesn't matter how much money you have. I don't, I don't think that's a good way to play this game. I come in similar to, to the way you do, Lee, which is I want to find out uh, if there's an edge and then execute on that edge. That's it. And, and if I, you know, at the end of the day when I check right. myself, when I check myself, did I, did I execute the trade that I set out to take? If the answer is yes and I took my last successful day, I consider that a successful day, Lee. Today was that day for me. I took a trade. I tried to fade right. a move. I tried to fade a move on the Nasdaq. Top ticked me out, and you know, went back down and ended up basically, you know, where, where I sold it. So that's the way it goes. I, you know, I, I don't, you know, again, the range was so small. I, I don't get, I don't get hung up on it. But one of the things that I, I find as an experienced trader and, and especially new traders, they want that revenge trade. You know what I mean? You, you just took a trade. Oh. You, you <laughs> You took a trade and, they, and, and the market took your $500. Oh, yeah. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to make sure the market knows you know more than the market does? <laughs> Is that the strategy? You're going to play that route? You're going to try to um, get even? You're we've all been through that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I try to hedge those. I, I thought I was smart Tuesday afternoon. I, I do afternoon pickup. I'll go in that last 20 minutes, and if something looks like it's my criteria, I'll pick up a few things for the open tomorrow. So I picked up apple puts on Tuesday afternoon. Well, imagine how that went well for me, because, you know, apple kept going up. But today, this afternoon, apple, I don't know if it was news or what, I was really doing other things, and it tanked. I was able to go in and adjust yeah. and pull that thing to profit, but I, I lucked out on that one. I lucked out on that one. Yeah, you know, it took. It's funny because being in the being in the Nasdaq that I I had already lost on my my trade and it went from you know sixty four and change sixty five all the way down to forty nines in a blink, and it it was all Apple and then you know and then we it came back so there was some news I don't know what it was either but it was all it was Apple related for sure because Apple was. Well, are you having a hard time shorting things right now? I mean, you you tried and yeah. I must not be the only one that can't short right now. No, I'm having a, you know, I'm having a, yeah, I don't want to, I'm not shorting stocks, and, uh, you know, calls are not, you know, they're they're not fat enough for me, again, on a swing basis to sell, so I'm not. And, uh, yeah, puts, I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to sell puts because, like you said, everything's at the high, so I, I don't want to sell puts, and I prefer to, I, I prefer to sell options myself. You buy them, I prefer to sell them in general, whether I'm long or short. You know, if, if I'm if I want to get synthetically long, you know, and I like a stock. Right. However, I did you know I did sell some puts uh, on Akamai this morning when it was trading under 40. I'm like, okay, this thing, I'm going to sell the 35s because I'm I'm okay with that. I'm I'm okay with that price. And then the stock rallied hard from 39s up to 42, and I got rid of them. But that's that's a scalp. That's a quick trade. That's a, you know that's that, that you know, that's probably something that you like doing uh, quite often. Well, but now think a minute. I've got some brand new tra traders that don't need to be trading on margin. Right, and, and again, I wouldn't. Yeah, just, I, I, that was not a trade I would even call in the room either because it, it's too much risk. Yeah, but you got you got to be. I mean, when you're I mean, you're an experienced trader, and some of these guys come in. They are experienced. They know how to, to trade on margin. I think if they're brand new trader, you better get your rules in before you go mortgage the house right. on margin. Right. So uh, you know, again, we we're talking about being humble and winning and losing. Don't let one trade, Lee, define your day, your week, your month, ever. Would you agree with that? I, I do. I don't go. I don't go for the big, big home runs anyway. I'm just, I'm just a base, a base runner. Yeah. You know, I, like I want the, doubles and singles. Well, you're, you're, you're a power hitter compared to me. I like to get hit by the pitch. Oh no! We don't want you hit by the pitch. Hey, it moves. It moves. Just, it, moves I, it moves. the. It moves the. The runners around the bases, Lee. We don't care. I, I know it does, but at the same time, now I'll do earnings plays like that. Mm -hmm. I'll go for some of those big home runs during earnings and events. But for the most part, every day, I just want to pick these things off nice and solid, nice and solid. So during every earnings, day, nice and consistent. During earnings, will you? You know, besides directional bets, will you play for? Uh, any direction, you know, will you, will you buy uh, strangles and, and buy straddles and those types of uh, trades? Yeah, I do. I, I, I will. I will. And But then again, the way I trade, I have to let this trade come to me. And because I trade math, yep. I don't trade charts. Now, I don't I don't look at all the technicals you look at. I'm trading only math. Right. And um, so I may see where I, a number looks a little more like a draw than another one, and I may, I may place it that way. Yeah. Um, 
But to be honest with you, I'd rather trade it in the morning of earnings and go the direction of the trade. That way I'm, I, I rarely miss. Yep. The trade comes to me. Right. You know, one of the things... I'm that, not, I don't gamble too much. I don't gamble too much. One of the things that I always, you know, people always ask, you know, because you trade your way, Lee, and I've traded very similarly to the way that you trade. I trade one way. We're both, you know, consistent traders making a living from doing this. Mm -hmm. But I always ask people, you know, people ask me, well, you know, what does a tradable system look like? And I think there's a number of stars that have to be in alignment uh, that, you know, work just because it works for me and just because it works for Lee doesn't necessarily mean it will always work for you. So a tradable system for me has to have certain benchmarks, uh, you know, that are suitable for the owner, for the trader. It's got to fit with your lifestyle, number one. You know, it's, it's yep. got to fit with your life goals. It's got to fit with your mindset, your psychology. That's six inches right. in here. And uh, it has to have a positive expect, uh, expectancy uh, so that you'll be profitable overall. Those are the key things uh, I think that any trader has to come with. And what Lee will teach you is definitely a, a piece of that puzzle. What I will teach you is definitely a piece of that puzzle. But you still have to figure out those pieces kind of on that map before you even get into this game and what what works for your lifestyle. Um, you know, not everybody, like, like Lee and I, we don't want to sit in front of the screens all day. Mm -mm. Well, we've talked about this with students before. If you, if you learn how to ski or you play an instrument or something like that, um, they'll teach you technique. Right. You know, a ski instructor doesn't bring you out on the slopes and give you a book to read and let you watch a couple of DVDs. You know, they get you out on the slopes and they'll show you the technique, but you have to learn how to do it. Right. And I think getting in the pocket of a mentor is probably one of the best investments somebody can make. Yeah. Is find somebody that trades the way you do, that it clicks, and um, it'll shorten the learning curve. You know, you, I don't know, Matt. I think you and I could probably knock five years off of somebody's learning curve. If yeah, they sat there and tried to do it themselves. There, there, that, there, more. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's not going to happen overnight, but but it's not going to be. Uh, you know, you, you're going to you're going to know a lot sooner with some basic skills, as Lee said. Listen, yeah, you know, this is all about having some skill sets that enable you to step into you know the ring of probably the the, the greatest game on earth, in my opinion, but also the most humbling and the most you know perverse game on earth. Uh, let, let me ask you something. Let me let me turn the tables on you again. Sure. And what do you do when you see this losing trade? What's your mentality? And and do you think, oh my goodness, you know, I, I've lost all this, or do you think I can make it up on the next trade? What's your what's your thought process? My thought process is I put on the trade. I know where I'm going to stop. I stop out and I move on to the next trade. That's it. And if I have five, no emotion. No emotions. If I have five losers in a row, that's the way it is. And. Uh, if, you know, again, we've talked about this in the past, Lee. You know, the reason why I came up with the moniker mistrade is I think, first of all, my wife, women are, are more, uh, they're less emotional when it comes to financial decisions. They're more rational. So I want to be that person, like, like Lee Jones, like my wife. My wife's not a trader. And then I also want, you know, I have to, I have, to have some acceptance that I'm going to win, I'm going to lose, those two things. And then I have to be able to sit and wait and pay, be patient. And that is the hardest thing. Even if I, you know, like today, I bought oil today at 86.80. I was waiting to buy it on that first pullback. I got it. It went up uh, 30 cents. I moved my stop to break even. It came back and took me out. Okay? That was my trade. I, maybe I moved my stop too tight. So, I, you know, and then it went up a dollar without me. Okay? Here at the end of the day. But then oil comes back right to where I bought it again. So now I could have taken it up to a, upwards to a dollar in profits. Then it comes back here. I'm just watching it as, as we're speaking. Oil came back to that same level. Ping pong trade is going on right now in a lot of things. Oil comes back to 8680, 8650s actually. And here we are. Uh, since we've been talking, Lee, oil's back up at 8671. I'm okay with that. Did I miss the trade this morning? Yeah, I took it, but I executed it also. So you have to be good with, you know. Again, this is you know not about getting even and not about knocking the guy out all the time. Sometimes it's just one one punch right. at a time, and, and you really have to stay in the ring. Did you walk away? Oh yeah, I walked away. I walked away 
Uh, that was probably at 7.30 after I lost on my NASDAQ trade and I took along on my uh, oil that I guess that ended that would have been a winner and it ended up you know scratching me so for for a small you know small winner so yeah I walked away I have no problem with that and and because of what I've found in my 20 plus years of doing this in my younger years I would have sat here and said I'm gonna get you my ego is gonna come in and I'm so revenge I'm, trade the revenge I'm, trade exactly so I I, I I don't do that anymore I've, I've, I've learned that all that does is cost me more money well it took you a while I think to get to that point oh yeah um, I think some people probably do need to get up and walk away and stop trying to chase it yeah you do, and, and and I think you have to, you know, again, with the, the whole idea of education and mentorship programs, you can, as as you said earlier, Lee, you can read it in a book, but you have to do it. You have to step in there. You have to feel the, the perspiration on your brow. You have to feel the, you know, the gut-curdling punch, you know, when you're losing. You have to feel that, and, 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 and I think that will also help you in figuring out what type of trader and what type of grades uh, ultimately will, you know, be more comfortable for you. Well, you've traded options and you've traded futures. Which one is harder, is the harder of the two for you? It's a loaded Have question. Have you tried a day trade option? I think it's hard. I think it's hard. Uh, you know, I think people can do it successfully. Uh, but, you know, what? It, it, it's kind of the same thing. I don't, I don't try to scalp um, futures for a tick or two ticks or eight ticks either. A lot of people can do that. I always tell people whether you're trading four times a day or you're trading 40 times a day, it should be the same, you know, you should have the same results. So if you're trading smaller, you're, you're making smaller profits, but your losses are smaller. So maybe my losses are wider than most people are comfortable with, and, and maybe there's somewhere in the middle that you have to, uh, you know, get, get uh, to. Uh, the nice thing I think about options is in a lot of, you know, when you're buying them, uh, Lee, there's, you know, you know what your all, your all time risk is. You know that if you you buy a call for a dollar and you buy ten of them, your risk is a thousand dollars. So that's pretty easy. If I buy a future and I don't put a stop in, and the thing drops forty points, and I didn't have a stop in at twenty, I've lost forty. You know, technically on paper. So uh, it's like forex. It, it can keep moving. It's you can lose a lot. Yeah, but with that being said, I also I also will put a stop in, so I know what my maximum risk is. Uh, well, let me ask you another question because I have uh, a couple of people on, on Skype with me and they're just asking a question. If somebody wanted to, to get into futures, what's, what's something you could tell them to, to do? I know they can come study with you, but what's something they can look at or start watching? Well, you know, uh, there's a number of, you know, Trade Monster has, you know, has a nice, uh, you know, application where you can, uh, I think Options Express does. A lot of these brokers, you can mm -hmm. do you can do a paper trading type account where you can go in there. Even CME has a has a uh, you know a platform where you can go in there and put orders in real time and get a flavor for trading one lot, two lot. You know, I think what you have to do, is CME, just go you know start with the exchanges themselves, get educated, read about the nominal rates. You know, ES one point is fifty dollars per contract. The Nasdaq is twenty dollars per contract. Uh, gold is. You know, it's uh, each dollar is is a hundred dollars a contract. So everything has its own nominal rates, and they have their own biorhythms. So you have to understand uh, before you have, even step into it, as as we talked about earlier. What am I going to trade? What fits with my lifestyle? Is it going to be uh, financials only? Is it going to be ags only? Because that's a nice two and a half hours that I can carve out of my day and follow. Is it oil? Because it's only you know, it's even though it's twenty four. All these markets trade twenty four seven. But they close for a period still, and they're more liquid during right. market hours. So if you want to right. day trade, find the ones that you know fit your lifestyle. And, and and I think that's really the important thing is, you know, just understand. Just as you know, when you're trading a thousand shares of stock, you know that a point is a thousand dollars. Do you feel like sometimes, I guess, in these conditions, that you're forcing a trade? No, I try not to. I think, in, I think, matter of fact, what I do is I trade less. I, I tend to go more to the sidelines. So to avoid the to avoid forcing yourself into a trade. To avoid trading for the sake of trading. Yeah. yeah. I've again that's kind of the that's kind of the revenge trade. I've been there before where I'm like I, I, again, I, the male ego, I'm going to sit here and make it happen by putting on a trade. <laughs> 
you know, today's a prime example. As I said, I was out, I was out, and I was wrong at seven thirty, and I never got back in. I'm okay. Yeah, but but I think I think you were wise enough to realize this is not my day. I need to do something else. Do you ever maybe break your day up in se segments? Your morning's not your morning, but you may come try it in the afternoon, or you yes. already figured out that's not the time you train. Yeah, no, that, that that's no, that's absolutely true. And I and I would have today, but there just wasn't an opportunity. There wasn't a setup this afternoon, so. Okay. Yeah. Matter of fact, you know, yeah. if, you look, if you look at the S and P's, you know, this afternoon we were just kind of ping ponging again, kind of fifteen to nineteen, fifteen to nineteen. So, um, yeah. it's hard. Uh, let's open it up to you know some questions. We've been we've been gabbing away here. Okay. If if people want to type in some questions here in the uh, in, in the platform here, we'd be happy to. Uh, I know Lee would be happy to answer. It. That may come in. Yeah, if we can answer any, we'll definitely do that. There was one. There was one question earlier um, that said uh, Akamai, the gap down. Any thoughts? And and I, and I kind of you know mentioned the stock. I didn't see this earlier. Uh, I liked it today from a buy standpoint, just because again, I I, I didn't see it as a knife. As long as thirty five held uh, on the chart, it looked pretty good. What do you think about that stock right now, Lee? You know, honestly, I can't, I can't hear which one you're looking at. Akamai, A K A M. I didn't. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, we we yeah we we trade that one quite a bit. That's another fun one. You know what? If it moves down a dollar for me, I can usually capture something and capture it on the rebound. So that one is another day trade ticker for us. Day okay. trade. I don't hold it. Right. I don't hold that. So yeah, it was down. Day trade only. It was down uh, seven and a half bucks today, but again, it ticked down to the 49s, and then it rallied midday down to, or rallied to uh, the 42 yep. level, which was the breakdown from the morning. So, you know, everything yep. everything kind of worked out there. That's yep. you know, that was a nice little trade, and then it just kind of rolled out. You know, had to roll out, as I say, everything. You know, absolutely everything, everything on the math side. Lee has seven bounces. You take a ball from any height, and it'll have seven bounces, and then roll out. I don't care what height it is. So. Um, any other questions? That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of look for the rollout, then you look for the uh, next move. Uh, there's another question here on the panel. Uh, would you need a larger account size in order to trade futures than options or stocks? And my question there is, I always tell people, whatever you're trading, make sure that is not your only money left to the world. Uh, don't start trading with $25,000 of that's all you have in the bank. Uh, Lee, you know, that would be kind of my question, you know, or how would you answer that? It's a, it's a difficult... I, I teach people to trade with starter accounts, and um, I, I have to let... I need to make sure that they're not going to mortgage the house away. So I need, to, I need them to know if they've got $500 in their broker, they can make a living. So um, I let them start with two thousand twenty-five hundred, and then I scrub it back. My my kid has to trade on one hundred and fifty dollars with options, and when we get it up to five hundred or seven fifty, I scrub it back to one hundred and fifty, and I make her go again. I want her to build the skills, right. and so after a few months of making sure that they've got the skills, then I think they can do something. But I don't want them using the rent money. Do you let uh, when they when they run that one fifty up to seven fifty? Do you let her buy a, a new dress or anything? No, <laughs> no, no. Why should I? She, I mean, you know. How about, a, how, about a, how, about, how about a new right how, how about a new iPhone since she made it by trading all those Apple options? Maybe, maybe. All right. She can trade. She can if she can get it up there. Fine, but. It, even I trade starter accounts, and, and I've, I've done this in front of my group. I started with 200, and it's now seven. It was 705 this morning. Tomorrow it would be 800. I want that. It just keeps those skills sharp. Yeah. yeah, I trade the larger accounts, but I want them to see that it, I built these skills by trading on dollars that I could afford. I didn't just walk in with 100 grand and start trading it. Right. That, and that's a key point. It doesn't matter how much money you have. I think it is the skill set that you're ultimately learning. Uh, you know, even with, and I would say this, Lee, that even with futures, if you traded a, you know, a one ES, and uh, you know, you had, I always tell people in a trading account, I'm not going to lose 20 times in a row, and and so whatever that, you know, whatever that number is, kind of to you, you have to kind of come to that number. But uh, you know, whether you're you're risking five points a trade or five ticks, 
uh, that has to, you know, you have to be comfortable in your skin with that, the type of risk, but you have to define that. So I always tell people, if I have a trading account, it's truly just trading and I'm trying to generate some income, you know, maybe my risk on a, a you know, is a little bit wider. Maybe it's, you know, 5% of my trading account, but that's maximum risk. So that, that doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, because I have 25 grand, I'm going to lose uh, 1250 every time. That's just kind of the maximum number. Uh, but, you know, everybody has... I know, but, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. With a $25,000 account, most people will go in and and put all 25000 of that at risk at one time. Right. And, and I don't... That's you, the you wrong and I way do to not, go. You know, I learned how I to not, it in. Right. You and I do not agree with that. So, you know, that's where we get into managing risk. And if you're trading a one lot of the spoos, one contract is $50 a point. So one contract, one contract has to go against you uh, twenty. Uh, what is it? Twenty-five times to get you to to, to twelve fifty. So uh, twenty-five point, twenty-five points is a two percent move right now, approximately on the on the S and P. So I don't trade that wide. I'm, we should probably do a, We should do one on risk management. Yeah, we really should. I think we should do a, a seminar on risk management. We really should. I get those questions too many times. Another question is, uh, Matt and Lee, I've never traded futures. Would the skills from day trading options transfer to trading futures? How are they similar or different? Thanks. Absolutely. You know, again, Lee, trading is trading. Whether you're, you know, there's, there's a different, I mean, you're still trading, uh, you know, an option is a derivative of uh, an overlying uh, asset and, and really a future is a, it's hard to, I always tell people that the future is not really a derivative. A future is really trading price. I mean, it, it is the truest trading out there, whereas an option, because in, in theory, but, yeah. but, 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 but there are options on futures. So if you could, if you could trade options with Lee, you could absolutely take that same, uh, uh, you know, technology and learning into the options market in futures, if that helps to answer that question. What do you think, Lee? Yeah, because I trade options on Forex. Yeah. So there you go. It's, a, it's the same type of thing. Um, we're getting a question here on position sizing for a starter account. How would you recommend people size uh, their positions, Lee, when, uh, you know, they're looking at, uh, you know, trading a starter account? Well, if they're trading, you know, let's assume they're trading a $2,000 starter account. I'm only going to put 1000 at risk at one time. And I may do two $500 trades or I may do one $1,000 trade. When that one pulls, then I put the other 1000 at risk. And that's how I do it. I don't go in and put all the 2000 at risk at one time. As, and just, it, as it plays out, then I put the rest at risk. I just kind of rotate them in. I call it rotating dollars. I rotate yeah. it in, I rotate it back out, then I rotate in another trade. You're not saying risk on the trade. Never put them all at risk. No, but you're not saying risk. You're saying capital allocated. So you will buy a thousand dollars of an option. Yeah, if I've got two thousand, I'm never gonna. I won't put all of it in the market at one time. I'll right. put a thousand. No, I trade material because we're day traders. Yes, <clears throat> but you. So you'll buy. You'll buy. Uh, you know, ten. Uh, Ten seventy cent contracts for seven hundred dollars, and, and and so that is within your your thousand dollar rules. All I'm saying, but then you're not gonna you're not gonna let you're not because it's a day trade, Lee. That's most likely not gonna go to zero anyways. So you're gonna be out. Correct. Your your risk is not that thousand dollars. I just want to clarify this for people. Correct. Your risk is two hundred dollars or whatever the number is. You're you're out at a, you're out for a dime loss on the seventy cent, not the full seventy cents. I, I'm imagining especially in the day trade. Um, yeah. I'll never go put my whole capital on the line at one time. Right. My whole working capital. No, and, 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 and again, I, 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 this is what I, I would say to people when it comes to futures, come in, learn the ES. Here, here, here's what I would always tell people. Trade the S&P 500. It's the widest, most liquid, most uh, you know, nominally, right. nominally powerful contract in the, in the world. It's, it's the best. It's, it is liquid. Trade one contract on a twenty-five thousand dollar account, and and maybe your max risk is ten points or five hundred dollars. So you can do that uh, fifty times, you know, in a row, and, and you're not going to do that. You're not going to lose ten points. I mean, that you're really wrong every time. Um, 
so trade small. Don't don't leg into positions. Don't add to it. Just trade small and 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 again learn the technique. Learn how to move in and out. Uh, there's scalping techniques. There are day trading techniques. There are swing trading day trading techniques. They're all different, and and you have to find the one that works for you. You know, if, if you want to if you want to buy over and over again, and maybe only risk eight ticks or two points on the ES, that means on one contract you're going to risk a hundred dollars every time. That's pretty. You know. It's a pretty easy way to learn, and, and maybe you pick your spots and you learn support resistance with Lee and I, and where to put those maximized entries before you, you know. That way, you know you're selling near the top of the range, and, and if you're wrong, you're going to be wrong quickly. So there's a lot of ways that you can do that. Um, <clears throat> I think that's about it, Lee. We're coming up on an hour, and I, uh, you know, anything else you want to add? This, this has been, uh, you know, we've, we've had a... And I think this has been good, but I, I do see the risk management questions coming in, so maybe we can do a, another one. We'll try to plan that for people. Okay. So, for Lee Jones, I'm Matt Davio. Uh, this is always fun. It's always enlightening for me, uh, because everybody, uh, I learn from Lee. And uh, I learn from other traders every day. That's why I talk yeah, to other traders. I learn from Matt. And uh, don't let anybody tell you this is an easy business. Simple but not easy. It's a simple concept, not yeah. easy. Yes. Big difference. Big, big difference. All right, Lee. Okay. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Matt. Okay. All right. Thank you, Matt. I always learn something from you as well, so thank you.